Well, folks, there's a lot of garbage going on behind the scenes with a lot of your favorite 1980s, 1990s television shows. A lot of garbage, and all that is coming out now. But a lot of the moral messages that were being promoted on the actual shows in the 1990s, way better than the stuff that is currently being promoted on your television screen. We'll go through that in a moment. This video is sponsored by our friends at PDS Dead. All right, and here and here was the favorite show of uh, both me and my younger sisters growing up. This is from Boy Meets World, and here's Mr. Feeney, a.k.a. John Adams from 1776, a.k.a. William Daniels. Gutenberg's generation thirsted for a new book every six months. Your generation gets a new web page every six seconds. And how do you use this technology? To beat King Cooper and save the princess. Shame on you. And ain't no tough love on uh, the status of learning on TV these days. Now, when he says you get a, a new web page every six seconds, it's literally that with TikTok. It's literally that with, with many of the other social media outlets. And people are using it for the dumbest possible things and dumbest possible reasons. It's only gotten worse since Mr. Feeney said that. By the way, I know that Danielle Ryder and Will from Boy Meets World, I love that show, have a popular watch through podcast. It's called Pod Meets World. I've heard it's awesome, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Will is not a coat that you hang in the closet, then pick it up when you're ready to wear it. His life goes on. He's not supposed to be here for you. You're supposed to be here for him. You get off my back. You think I want this? It just happened. Now, when Will was a baby, I was scared. Oh, Cut the crap, all right? Cut it. Because I've been there. But I didn't run out on my family. I was there every day for them, because that's what a man does. Yeah. That's the good stuff right there. Damn! Again, you don't see a lot of that on TV anymore. It is much more about sympathy for the guy who ran out on his family and how societal racism is actually responsible for the man running out on his family. And this would be considered a white supremacist show now, where we actually have like the, the, the black uncle telling the black father that he needs to stick around. But what are you, a tool of the establishment? Haven't you read the 1619 Project by Nicole Hannah-Jones? Hey, where's your ribbon? Oh, I don't wear them. You don't wear the ribbon? Aren't you against AIDS? Yeah, I'm against AIDS. I mean, I'm walking, aren't I? I just don't wear the ribbon. Who do you think you are? Put the ribbon on. Hey, Cedric, Bob, this guy won't wear a ribbon. Who? Who doesn't want to wear the ribbon? <laughs> oh, look, a, t a time when you could mock cancel culture and get away with it. Now the creators of cancel culture actually would, would think it's okay for Kramer to get his ass kicked over this. Edward, your mother and I send you to college to get an education, not to party hardy. Look, I study hard all week. When the weekend comes, I want to relax. I mean, that's the whole reason why I joined the fraternity, so I could have some fun. I don't object to fun. I love fun. But I don't need to take a drink to have a good time. And neither do you. Why do you always do this? Why do I always do what? Limit me. Build walls around Edward, me. Edward, this is not about balls. This is about roads. And drinking will take you down a road that leads to a dead end. Wow. Hardcore. Again, some serious dadding going on in the 1990s shows. Now, what's amazing about this is that even in the 1990s, a lot of conservatives, cultural conservatives, were very critical of TV for saying there are not enough strong father figures on TV. And they would point to shows like, for example, The Simpsons, where Homer is a dullard. Or they would point to Married with Children, where Al Bundy is a schlub and gross. But there were strong fathers in many of these shows, even in the 90s. You know, I even changed the way I looked for her. Well, maybe it shouldn't change for anybody. Maybe you should just get used to who you are. Now, try to name a show that has a strong father. You're going to have a tough time coming up with a sitcom with even an intact family, let alone a strong dad. Honey, I don't want to stop you from growing up, but you just can't go from 12 to 25 overnight. Kathy Santoni did. <laughs> We've got to realize that this teenage stuff is all new for both of us. But honey, we can work it out. If we keep one thing in mind, we have no choice. Danny, let's go. We're going to be late. Oh, DJ, don't ever let your father do your makeup. I did it. It looked better before. You know, when I first started wearing makeup, I made the same mistakes. Really? How old were you? 18, 19? No, actually, I was right around DJ's age. Glad I asked. Really? 
your makeup when you were my age? Uh-huh. Only my mom taught me that the secret to wearing makeup is to make it look like you're not wearing any. Well, how do you do that? Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> well, by bringing out DJ's natural beauty. Okay, so you know how they're like actual gender roles in this particular scene? See, see that? See how the dad doesn't know how to do the makeup, but the, the woman knows how to do the makeup? Now the dad would be like, I'm going to do your makeup. Let's do this thing. Free yourself. We'll get to more of this in a moment. First, if you're feeling weighed down by collections, medical bills, credit cards, personal loans, PDS Debt is your beacon of hope. They offer an innovative one-stop shop that'll guide you on your journey to debt freedom and provide the relief you've been longing for. PDS Debt understands there's no one-size-fits-all solution to becoming debt-free. That's why they offer multiple programs and solutions, every one tailored to your specific needs, budget, and financial goals. Whether you're going through a serious hardship or you just can't seem to keep up with the high interest on your credit cards, PDS Debt will help craft a custom solution to give you instant relief and start saving you cash. If you're making monthly payments, on your debt and your balances are not going down, this program is for you. PDS Debt provides options that consolidate your debts into one low monthly payment. Anyone with 10 grand or more in eligible debt qualifies, no minimum credit score required. They want to help anyone with good and bad credit. Plus, with PDS Debt, you'll save thousands in interest and fees and pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering my listeners a free debt analysis. It only takes 30 seconds. Head on over to pdsdebt.com slash Shapiro for your free debt assessment today. That's pdsdebt.com slash Shapiro today. All right, next one here is from Growing Pains. You know, a lot of people tell you that drugs are cool. And they're the same people who are saying that Everybody's doing something, so what's your problem? Well, they're wrong. Everybody's not doing drugs, and you don't have to try them to be cool. Look, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your lives, but I am telling you that you don't have to do something you don't want to just to keep your friends happy. And one last thing. I'm not being paid to say this. This is how I feel. And if you think that makes me uncool, then you're wrong. So my sisters and I used to watch Growing Pains all the time. In fact, my younger sister, Ari, had a huge crush on Kirk Cameron, who's now with us. Kirk, good to see you. How's it going? <laughs> ben, I had no idea you watched Growing Pains back in the day. Of course I watched Growing Pains. Everyone watched Growing Pains back in the day, of course. And we're talking here about you know the, the way that, that TV treated teenagers back then, as opposed to how TV treats teenagers now, the change in values that we've even seen since, since the 90s. TV would never put something like that on now, despite the fact that, by the way, drugs are way more dangerous now than they were even yeah. then. We've got 100,000 people who died last year of fentanyl. A huge number of those people are, are below the age of 18 because they're taking other drugs that are laced with the fentanyl. But you don't see these sorts of PSAs in the middle of, of shows that are aimed at teens anymore. What what happened? Well, we don't see these kinds of PSAs that we were doing back on Growing Pains, but there's other covert PSAs that are being snuck into even children's television programming and cartoons, and you pointed this out with Coco Melon and, and, and Gonzo and others, that are actually pushing drugs on little kids at eight years old, seven and six years old, to permanently change their gender. So things have so radically changed. And I, I think that at the end of the day, my 100% knowledge here on the topic of how we've gotten so turned around upside down and inside out is I think we've gotten away from God and we've gotten away from the fundamental values that led to the greatest nation on earth with more freedom, more opportunity and more blessing and protection. And if we don't get back to addressing the heart uh, and the root, I think we never fix the fruit. Uh, but if we do do that, and and you're doing such a great job with that, and I'm trying to do what I can where I am, I think we can get there. You know, Kirk, one of the amazing things is that when you look at shows like this, and this is a very popular mainstream television show, that is actually a, a sort of watered down reflection of general culture at the time. And so general culture yeah. in the 1990s was just more conservative Overall, because of what you're talking about, people still went to church at a higher rate than than they do now. People still were part of social organizations and felt a, a certain so level of social responsibility to maintain the social fabric, even back in the 1990s. And what's amazing is that growing up in the 1990s, I remember how my parents were like, well, this isn't like the 1960s or 1950s, like how much things have degraded yeah. even since then. And so the the fact that TV shows like that, which again, Hollywood was left wing in the 90s. The fact that this was considered the sort of mainstream normal opinion in the 90s and now you fast forward, you can see how far culture has moved. If Hollywood is promoting this sort of stuff, what is the far left promoting? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what really uh, s sobers me is to realize that all this has happened on our watch. Think about that for a second. We we have allowed this degrading and this decline to happen. And um, this is what motivates me 
to do everything that I can while I have breath on the stage of this world to do everything to uproot the evil where I can and plant seeds of truth and beauty and goodness. And uh, I believe that there are great comebacks and turnarounds. Um, I've been I've been asking myself the question, what if this national cultural setback is really a divine setup for a spiritual comeback led by the family of faith in the places of politics and entertainment, especially? Yeah, Kirk, you obviously were a, a child actor. We've seen all this evidence come out now about what was going on in Hollywood with regard to child actors in the in the 2000s, particularly, but even in the late 1990s. What what was your experience like as, as being on set as a kid? You know, this is a crazy question. I, I was a little out of the loop and wasn't paying attention to all of this dark side of children's TV and Hollywood documentaries and all of that. But it turns out that Brian Peck uh, was one of the front front runners of uh, th- those being featured in, in these stories. And he was my stand in for s- six years on Growing Pains. But uh, my experience, thankfully, was uh, was good and wholesome. And I was surrounded by my parents and a great cast and crew. And fortunately, uh, I-, I didn't drown in that um, immoral morass. I somehow avoided it, which I'm really grateful for. Yeah, I mean, I-, I would assume that a lot of that is due to your parents. I mean, the fact is that you see with a huge number of, of kids who are in Hollywood, and I know some of them, I have, I have some who are relatives, actually. Uh, and, and what you see is that, you know, the, the kids who have strong parental influences around them are, 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 in fact, protected from a lot of the darker side of the showbiz. But if you don't have great parents and a great structure around you, Hollywood is not an amazing place. No, no, no. It, and and it's, it's, it's spreading everywhere. Uh, God gives children to moms and dads, and it's our job, our sacred duty to protect them. And fortunately, my parents did that. And... Um, Man, we we need we need to get back uh, on our game. We need to be creating culture rather than complaining about it. We've become whiners instead of winners. And I want to do everything that I can. I've got grandkids on the way to make children's programming that is going to be uh, good for them, building their character while entertaining them. Kirk, you just made me feel incredibly old. How's that? Yeah, you have, you have grandkids. You have grandkids yeah. on the way. We're now the older generation, and uh, and that that's a weird thing. It is. But I'm, I'm glad I didn't die in my youth. Uh, I'm here to be married 30 years, and I hope that I get to see grandchildren and maybe even grandchildren like my parents are going to get to. So uh, very, very grateful and, and thankful to be your friend and on your show, Ben. Well, thanks so much, Kirk. It's great to see you. Thank you. You too. All righty, folks. So the moral of the story is if you watch shows from the very, very edgy 1990s, this was a much more solid country in terms of values in the 1990s than it is right now. This land is rich with snow-covered mountains, sun-kissed beaches, wild, untamed rivers, and a, a warm, loving people ready to embrace you. Immerse yourself in the spectacle and the grandeur that are these United States. This America. 